Hey, hey. How you feeling? Good. Feeling good? (laughs) All right. Doing good? I'm great. (laughs) Welcome to episode 12 of The Harvest, where we discuss everything cinema and story. And as we grow, you grow. As we learn, you learn. We've got a special treat, special surprise. Yes, we do. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be able to do something that we did a couple of episodes ago. Actually, we got some really great reviews and some, uh, you know, some great interest in the virtual roundtable discussion that we did with the actors from Underground. Yeah. So we're going to do that again with the crew this time. Right, right. Yeah, I heard a lot of great things about the first one, and I'm excited to see what the second one's about. Yeah. Well, let's not waste any more time. Let's just get, a, get in and listen. Cool. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Hey everyone and welcome. And welcome to the Harvest. Welcome to the Harvest. And welcome to the Harvest Virtual Roundtable. Welcome to the Harvest Virtual Roundtable. The Harvest Virtual Roundtable. Virtual Roundtable with the crew of Underground. With the crew of Underground. My name is Sherry Cowie and I am the script supervisor and executive producer. I'm Marissa Vasquez, and I'm the storyboard artist of Underground. I'm Jesse, and I am the production assistant. I'm Eric Monzone, and I am the line producer. My name is Chelsea Cowie, and I am the set photographer and continuity for Underground. I'm Peter Bussier, and I'm property master. I'm Skippy, and I'm the special effects artist. I'm Alana, and I'm the second assistant director. My name is Arissa Page, and I am executive producer and actor. I am Michaela Cowie, and I am the first AD of Underground. What was the first moment that you remember falling in love with film? I remember in middle school, uh, my friends and I on my street, we used to have a camcorder and we used to go around and do uh, like sketch comedy. So uh, at the time, the Chappelle Show, uh, SNL, the Jamie Kennedy Experiment, uh, a lot of those like prank and sketch shows were, were really popular. Uh, so we used to just go around around the street and uh, over friends' houses and, and stuff, and just come up with like different sketches. Um, and uh, I, usually, my role is like as the director, uh, and then my friends love to act. So, kind of always had a had a natural uh, knack for for kind of being behind the camera and behind the scenes. When I was a toddler, like two or three years old, I used to memorize my favorite books and retell them to my sister, who was an infant at the time. Um, and then growing up, I was just constantly reading, constantly enthralled by watching movies. Always had an affinity and an interest for photography and taking pictures. So really, any method of storytelling is something that I've been passionate about for as long as I can remember. I honestly discovered my love for film when I was eight years old. I used to run around my house and reenact all of my favorite films. But it wasn't until I was 25 that I got the opportunity to really sink my teeth into my passion. And um, I've been at it ever since. Growing up, I did a lot of theater, um, art and acting in general. And as I got older, I took more of an interest in the artist role in film. Um, Particularly when I was in high school, I studied hand-drawn animation. Pretty sure it was when I was a kid. Um, It was a great way to escape, to find a different reality, to bring my mind into a place that I never thought it could go, uh, to experience different eras and time periods. Um, And it introduced a whole new world of creativity to me. I'm I'm totally going to be a nerd here and and say Star Wars. As I was a very young child in, uh, in the late 70s, and it's, it was like reading a book. You got to go visit places that weren't reality, you know what I mean? And they had heroes, they had bad guys. It was a feel-good moment, you know? On the other end of it, um, I also saw Jaws in the late 70s at a drive-in. And that kind of, again, uh, fueled for later, the, the gory aspect of my job. Uh, that that fueled me there to another world I can go in, get scared, and then get out. Hands down Star Wars. And I'm sure that's probably like expected of a lot of people, but um, when I was younger, my family and I lived overseas in Saudi Arabia in the 70s. And um, we had free movies every Wednesday and two big screens. <clears throat> and when Star Wars came out, and I saw that on screen for the first time, I was really young. And uh, I think I was six, something like that. And it was like nothing I had ever seen before. 
and and in fact it was like nothing that had ever been done before you know i'd say it's it goes back to my very early childhood i was always a gigantic fan of spider-man and when the 2002 movie came out i was three years old probably too young to see it but my parents let me see it anyways but I just loved seeing that character soar across the sky and it felt like I was him and you know I, I could relate to the character a lot as I grew up but I think it was that moment seeing the first Spider-Man film that I fell in love with it. I was a kid and I was watching a movie and I started to notice some continuity issues with one of the main characters hair. Um, in the same scene it was above her shoulder and then it was pushed back and then it was above and then it was pushed back and I realized that I just had an eye for it. Was working in production always the goal? I had done special effects makeup throughout my life um, as a child um, trying to figure out how to make the scary stuff scary and stuff with things I could find at home. Um, and then I put it away for a while, for years and years, and I went into trucking. I was a management and supervisor uh, for a trucking company. And during that time, I had joined up with a local haunted house, um, and I became their special effects supervisor. Um, so I did that for 13 years. And I kind of got sick of trucking. and. A friend of mine um, who was acting in local movies, he's like, why don't you try doing special effects in movies and stuff? I'm like, I don't know, why don't I try doing that? So I, I quit my job and um, I reached out to a couple productions and they brought me on and I got my start. Production was always the goal for me deep down and it was always something that I was passionate about, but I never knew that I could really have a career in it. So when I enrolled in schools, I actually was going to pursue a degree in psychology. Um, in my sophomore year of college, I was able to go down to a film festival in Orlando. And after the overwhelming emotion I felt when I was down there and being surrounded by like-minded people, um, I realized that that was really what I wanted to do. So when I got back to school, I walked right into the director of theater arts program's office and I just asked about my options and I switched my major to theater arts and never went back. I know that I've always loved production and film. When I was younger I used to always create edits off of my GoPro footage and I love doing that. But uh, recently I've started my own videography business called Radiant Media. Um, and in there I've been creating for other businesses and so I'd love to make production my full-time career. I actually always wanted to be involved in film and theater. However, my career path took me on a different route. I am currently the CFO and HR director of a company, um, which has given me a lot of experience though that I feel like I have brought into working in theater in the film industry. Mostly I've gotten a lot of experience or had a lot of experience working with people, especially on the HR side, but even on the financial side, learning how to explain things to people. Uh, finances are a language that some people don't understand, so you need to learn how to put it in their perspective. Um, and I find that on film sets, uh, you do the same thing. My, my career, my background is all in finance. Um, so I've, I've, always, uh, I've always had film as sort of a hobby. Um, it was always something that was a lot of fun, um, but it was something that I knew took a lot of expertise in order to, to, to be really good at it. Um, the barriers to entry in film are just so high and you see people who've had careers, particularly like acting careers, um, who start off as, as kids and they go through and they have you know an entire lifetime of, uh, of experience um, and background before, before even really making it um, on the big screen. So because of that, um, obviously the, the, the difficulty there, um, you know, it was, uh, it was never really the goal, but it was always uh, it was something you do dream about. And, you know, after having met the Garcia brothers in 2014 um, and the rest of the cast of Faith, 
uh, it was something that again has started to to come up as a uh, you know just a fun fun hobby um, and has really been turning more into something a lot more than that um, the last uh, the last five six years. Production actually hasn't been the goal for me. I recently discovered my passion for film while working with the Garcia brothers. Um, I recently just graduated with a degree in management and marketing. Um, the, for the class of 2020 and during my time at college I really wanted to get some hands-on experience in the field of marketing so Eric Monzone actually connected me to the Garcia brothers who gave me this incredible opportunity to kind of apply what I'm learning in the classroom to the film industry. Production was never the goal I was in theater when I was young I did you know a dozen shows or whatever um, so I always loved production but uh, it never occurred to me honestly um, to make a career out of it. Um, I have two jobs right now. I'm in uh, business retail um, management uh, as my staple bread and butter. Uh, but I also own my own company. It's a, um, a props and costuming company called Treasures for the Dragon's Sword, which is how I met up with Mount Harvest. I am a high school English teacher. Um, I wish I could say that I was one of those people who knew what I was going to be when I grew up for my entire life, but I really had no idea. Um, however, English and teaching English was a very natural path for me to take, especially because of that previously mentioned passion for storytelling. So being able to share that passion with my students is one of my favorite parts of my job. I mean, if I had to say if I, I was in pursuit of a different career at any point, um, I used to want to work with wild animals and uh, maybe someday I still will. Um, wildlife rehabilitation, where you bring in the animals, rehabilitate them and send them back out into the wild. I can't say that necessarily production has always been the goal. My current occupation is as a pilot in the United States Army. Um, however, I, I got this opportunity to work on storyboarding for Underground and it's definitely opened my eyes to what potential opportunities are out there for me in my artwork in the film industry. What area of production do you work in? So I do a whole bunch of stuff. So uh, first and foremost, I'm an actress. It's my first love. It's, it's where my heart is. It's where my passion is. But I am also now a producer, writer, um, I've been known to do sound, <laughs> hold the boom. Um, people who know me just know um, I love every aspect of film and so willing to help and just excited to be a part of this magical experience called filmmaking. I'm a property master, so I'm in charge of, uh, you know, uh, any props that they need. Um, you know, in my case, I, I specialize in historical um, replicas and things like that. So I, I wanted to uh, make sure that everything they had was historically accurate. Um, so that's you know, guns, bags, belt pouches, knives, um, whatever they needed. I like to generalize uh, what I do by saying I'm art department because I've done production design, I've done props, I've done set deck. Um, in addition to my main gig being special effects and special effects artistry. Um, I've always been a special effects artist, um, but in reality, not every film has that needed, you know? But every film does have an art department and does need other aspects filled, so... Um, it's, it's beneficial to me to be able to put on different hats in the art department. I wanted to get my hands into everything and I did. I've been a stage manager, I've worked on crew, I've um, edited scripts, I've done script supervising, I've directed. Um, but right now, I, my, my main focus has been primarily on um, the management side and the script supervision side. I like being involved in the, the original script editing um, process. It's, it's very um, creative, creative and coming and seeing it come to light on a set um, is 
really uh, a privilege for me. It's exciting to see. So for this film, I was a production assistant, which basically means that you do ever, whatever the directors want you to do. <laughs> so I had to help um, build up this green screen rig, and that was fun to learn how to do that. Had to put some good um, handyman tools to use. But uh, that's that was basically my role. In the future, I do want to work more on the editing side of things, it, which I've been able to do in my own videography business. But uh, I, I would say that's my favorite part, is editing. And even before editing, having the knowledge of how you want the film to look when you edit it so that you can frame shots in a certain manner so that it looks better when you edit it. So I found the thing that I wanted to do with theater was stage management, and that correlated with what I wanted to do on a film set. Um, which is really kind of similar, which is on the management side and behind the scenes, but working, um, I started off working as a script supervisor and kind of worked my way up to first AD, and that is really where I feel as if I can use my best qualities in that specific role as first AD, um, and that's where I'm, I'm happy and that's where I feel like I excel. As a second AD, I act as a point of contact for all of the cast and crew members during the um, pre-production stages. So that meant that I organized all of the um, NDAs and I made sure that all of the SAG requirements were met, um, you know, going into production. So that meant, you know, just really organizing all of the cast and crew to make sure that the entire production ran efficiently. So I'm the line producer, uh, which means I manage the, the budget um, and then that spills over a little bit into the, into the schedule um, as well. And, uh, and, and I, I think, uh, you know, just my background, um, I'm a project manager by trade, um, finance guy by trade. So for me, it was, uh, it was a pretty natural fit. Um, I'm more of like a numbers guy, analytics guy than, a, than an actor. Um, but I do love uh, just watching the whole production come together. Set photography and continuity, that's usually where I find myself. Uh, maybe it's that analytical teacher side of me that makes me have an affinity for continuity for the shots. Um, so I get to work closely with like the, the script supervisor and members of the director's team to make sure that everything is precise. Um, and then the photography piece, I find myself more comfortable doing set photography than being one of the camera operators per se. Um, because I love to capture people in their positions creating the story. I love to get the behind the scenes so that not only are we creating a story, but we're creating the process of creating the story as well. What is your favorite part of the production process? The whole process of it all. Sitting down with the producer and the director, um, mapping out and drafting the story scene by scene and then watching that come to life on the screen post-production. I really um, enjoy being involved in um, the story concept side of things and um, brainstorming and coming up with ideas and different types of characters all the way through to uh, editing the scripts but there's something truly um, magnificent about being on set. Um, it's a different type of energy than you can experience anywhere, um, no matter what career that you're in. Um, to have so many creative and talented people come together and be focused on one end goal. I mean, the set building is, is, is a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> I wish, uh, wish we wouldn't always have to do it, but uh, it, it, it's really, it's a great time. Um, you know, working with the team and, and uh, you know, working with their hands and, and getting there and uh, and you really do get to know the rest of the cast and the crew um, as you're building the set. Um, you know, sometimes this takes long hours um, and, uh, you know, you're trying to meet a deadline and everyone's working together. Um, and it's, it's uh, you know, definitely w one of the more busier times uh, of, of the set. Uh, but it's a part that, that I enjoy the most. I'm gonna go with pre-production and on-set shooting. Um, from the beginning, I get the script, 
and off of a script I'll do a script breakdown uh, for my special effects parts that are needed and that could be anything from big elaborate bloody gags to um, just minor very subtle nuances on an actor's face be it sweat or whatever and on a period piece there's a lot of that so if you're shooting something that happened in the 1800s um, there's a lot of dirt that should portray on an actor's body um, so we have to incorporate that in um, so I'll do all my ordering of uh, supplies needed for what's coming up off of my breakdown and kind of get a an idea rough as how I'm gonna pull off <laughs> elaborate gags or not so elaborate gags um, and I'll work with the producers and uh, make sure that our visions are the same. I love being on set. That is so much fun. Uh, aside from, you know, gathering everything that is required in the film, which is a lot of fun for me. I love the treasure hunt aspect of it. I love being on set, helping to tweak things, fine tune things, matching people up to their respective gear and, and, and whatnot. And then just seeing the whole process unfold, it, it's just such an enriching experience. Hands down being on set, um, there's something about the fast paced energy and just everybody coming together, the actors, the crew, um, the makeup team, the hair team, the caterers, literally everybody um, is on set with one goal in mind. And I just think that that's a feeling that really can't be replaced anywhere else. My favorite part of the production process would have to be the filming days themselves, just because the pre-production process is kind of like a hurry up and wait type situation. We put so much work and dedication into the pre-production process just for those, you know, it was two days of filming for Underground, so just for those two days we put in weeks and weeks of work. So seeing all of that hard work pay off, all of the paperwork, all of the auditions and the rehearsals for the actors, you know, all of the um, scrambling around and trying to find the perfect props and the perfect costumes for, for the actors, um, you know, all of that work you just see pay off in those few days that we are um, actually filming. I love editing and I really think that's maybe the coolest part of production you know obviously you need to have your shots right you need to have your storyboarding right that you know in, in the way that you want to execute the shots but once they're done you can craft them in such a way that provokes an emotion or enables your audience to see from a different or a particular perspective is there a part of production that you don't like Any time I'm in front of a camera. If I had to say uh, one thing, uh, it's the waiting. I hate waiting. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you work so hard on something, you get so excited and just waiting to finally get the fruits of your labor. I think all of us actors and filmmakers, uh, we go through the same thing, like, oh, I just want to see it. I just want to see it. How did it come out? Um, I don't know if that's just me, but uh, that part I don't like. I don't like waiting. Oh, it's agonizing waiting because I have nothing to do with post-production. So waiting for uh, the, the finished product so you can see what everybody's accomplished is... Oh, I just want to see it, you know, and, and I, I fully appreciate how much work goes into post-production. Um, but I'm sure anybody that's not involved in the post-production part of it uh, probably feels the same way. You just can't wait to see the final product. I detest post-production editing. I, I, I'm not a technical guy. <laughs> So not only can I not do it, but I've, I've, I've watched a few. Um, I've, I've watched a few go down and I, I'm too fidgety. I can't sit there and just do that for hours and hours. I, I can't, I no. I just, ugh, it makes me twitch. I just can't. Run. I'm, you know, I'm kind of grew up more as an athlete and 
uh, you just want to, I mean, my instinct, I guess, is, is just to get on the field and just go, um, or get on the court and just go. But, uh, but it's that, it's that weight, you know, um, <laughs> it's that weight. And then somebody comes in and they, you know, maybe they, they adjust something or, um, especially when you're doing that out in the cold, <laughs> uh, and it's 40 degrees out and, uh, you're freezing, uh, you know, or, or you're waiting for, you know, something else, maybe if, if you're working with, uh, animals or little kids, you know, that can, that can really, uh, uh, extend the, the, the wait time. <laughs> Strike. Um. The cleanup aspect, you know, it, it's um, a double-edged sword, though. You know, you're cleaning up, you're, you're ending, it's the end game. Um, it's the end to what's going on and finalizing things. You get to have that opportunity to um, be around people naturally as they are. You know, people aren't in character, people aren't worried about, you know, a cue or something like that. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Um, but it's sad in a way as well. And I, I think, um, you know, the work is okay. Somebody has to do it, um, but it's a, you know, it's a closure and, you know, you have to make the best of it. I wouldn't say that I am a particularly handy person. So having to build the green screen was kind of a challenge for me. So maybe that's one thing that I didn't necessarily like. Um, but you know, it's it is a part of the process in, in set building. I I did enjoy it to a certain extent, and you know, it's it's definitely a learning process for me to do stuff like that. There wasn't necessarily anything that I really disliked about the process. Uh, however, a challenge that I did face with it was when we had a location change. So I had the storyboard drawn out, and then when we had the location change, the setting and the, the blocking of the actors changed a little bit. So we just had to work around that and adapt to the situation. What was the most memorable part of working on Underground? Um, I would have to say it was location scouting. It was just so amazing uh, walking the streets of New Bedford and seeing God's hand move the way that it did and just threw everything that we needed for this project at it. Um, people were just so willing, so so nice. New Bedford, they, they opened their doors to us uh, and we went to these museums and houses and it was just an amazing experience. The uh, research and development that went into the first uh, version of the script and um, I remember uh, sitting down with uh, some of our other you know, favorite actors and members of Cast of Faith and, and going through and brainstorming and doing research on, uh, on this time period and the different characters in the time period and um, really just exploring, you know, what, what characters, you know, can we, can we come up with? Um, okay, uh, I totally have to give props out to whoever was on locations because I'm a big, big history buff. Like, I love history. I love period pieces. And when you put me in Salem and put me in that, that ancient building, oh my God, I was just, I was like a kid in a candy store. And then with the new Bedford, oh my God. Just, I mean, seeing all the history places where things went down and everything, I was like in my glory, you know? Thank you for putting me in those two places, those two locations. It made my two days, I was, I was so, proud of it. I was showing it off to everyone. My personal favorite genre has been and always will be historical fiction, um, especially a time period like this where it was such a divisive time in our country's history and it's a period that's talked about often and to be able to work on a story and help write a story and then see it come to life in some of these locations like New Bedford and Salem where this history actually unfolded in real time in the 1800s to me was easily the most memorable part. The costumes, um, I think it really tied everything together because obviously it's a period piece um, so when you have a period piece, you really want to find costumes that um, really reflect the time and reflect those characters. And I think our costume designers, um, our makeup artists, and our hairstylists um, really tied all of that in 
together. Being able to hold the RED digital camera, I, you know, I'm a film connoisseur myself and learning all these new gadgets has been greatly beneficial for me as I'm just starting out and I really wanted to be able to get up close with the RED digital camera. It is this crazy contraption of all these different buttons and it'll take years for me to master once I get my hands on it again. But really being able to physically hold and know that I'm in charge of this really, really expensive device was empowering and gave me confidence that I think I'll need. Definitely the end of day one. So initially we t were thinking that the filming would consist of three days, two days at our first location and one day at our last location. So we realized, you know, towards the end of day one that we may be able to squeeze those two days into only one, which was extremely beneficial financially since we had to um, pay permits and location fees since we were filming on a na National Park Service location. So once we realized that we could do, um, you know, two days in one, we all got really excited and motivated to make that happen. Um, but towards the end, it was getting very hectic and everybody was, you know, really on their toes trying to get the perfect scene and Arissa and Tommy did an incredible job. It was actually their um, arguing scene um, and it came out so, so, so good. So just seeing everybody work together to make this common goal happen, you know, for the sake of saving money for the budget was just something that was super, super incredible. I, I had never worked on the production side of film before, so I really had no idea what the environment and the atmosphere of the office was going to be like, um, or even how I would be welcomed in as a member of production. Um, however, when I got there, it was always a very light atmosphere. They were super welcoming, and I overall had a very great experience with the crew. I got a cameo. That was awesome. Uh, wasn't expecting that at all. Uh, tons of fun. Just I got to play a drunken sailor, and um, you know, it, it's just so much fun to be part of the production that to get a little, you know, second in on it is just a. That was a thrill. It was a real thrill. Dave, you get out quick so he can stay close to the wall. And action. I'm telling you, the lynch was checking you out. Very pretty. <laughs> what was the most difficult decision made in developing Underground? Well, as a script supervisor, um, my main role wasn't to make decisions, but it was to provide uh, Xavier as the director and Jonathan as the DP the information that they needed to make the, the best choices and decisions that they could. Um, if I saw her, um, inconsistencies in continuity on the set or if a, an actor deviated from the script um, too much, I would bring that to Xavier or I would bring that to Jonathan, kind of sidebar with them um, and say, hey, I need you to take a look at this or, you know, I red flag this just, you know, before we move on to the next shot and, you know, we kind of had, we worked didn't kind of have to, but we did work as a team um, because they needed to rely on the people that they had surrounded themselves with. It's really making sure that um, the items that were given to the respective actors fit their personalities. It's very, very important. Otherwise, they're going to, you know, look like they just walked into a, a you know, a costume shop and just slapped a bunch of stuff together. It has to look authentic, not only for the time period, but for the actors themselves. When we were in the pre-production process, developing the story and trying to decide which section of the proposed story that we wanted to create in the 10 minutes that we produced. Um, because there were so many ideas and so much heavy character development that narrowing the scope down to just a 10 minute period at the time seemed nearly impossible. Um, but I think on the back end of it, all of us are very happy with the story that we told in the 10 minutes and we're excited to see where it goes from here. Um, I remember when we were drawing out some of the scenes, there would be parts of the scenes that were difficult for me to visualize someone doing. So we'd use members of production and whoever was in the office that day as our models. We'd take a picture of them doing some 
weird pose that I could then use my reference photo for the scene, which sometimes got pretty funny. <laughs> On the first day of filming when we were in Salem and we actually had a very tight time restraint um, on that day because we had a permit to film where we were filming and we had to be out of there by a certain time and we had I don't remember how many shots but we had a few shots left and we only had time to do one and we had to figure out what what exact shot would be best for the story that we were trying to tell so working with Xavier and Jonathan on figuring out what shot we actually wanted to do um, and I think we chose that right shot. Since it was my first time acting as a second assistant director I was really unaware of all of the union requirements and we did have union actors on set so we had to make sure we were very anal about meeting all of those requirements and including that into our you know our overall game plan. So that meant when the actors had to have breaks, we had to have strict guidelines for that. Um, every six hours there needed to be a meal provided, so we needed to make sure that we were right on the dot during those times during production. Um, so really reading through the SAG guideline, guidelines and making sure that I understood that because they do vary from year to year. So making sure that we were very up to date in that our um, production would run efficiently. I don't think things were particularly challenging. Maybe the, the biggest thing is that I forgot to wear sunscreen. So <laughs> I uh, got burned to a metaphorical crisp or even a literal crisp. But besides that, keeping people offset. Um, you know, I didn't engage with too many people, but there was that one guy who was on his motorcycle and, you know, before I could even say, stop, 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 he ran right in front of the green screen and, and almost uh, almost took the, out the green screen and uh, interrupted the set for a little bit. So I was very apologetic about that, that I wasn't able to keep that from happening. What keeps you motivated to keep working in such a difficult industry? That's good. That's very good, actually, because this is a very difficult industry. Um, well, it's different every day. And I, my kind of personality, I need that because I get bored really, really quick. So I need it to be different, you know? Like every day is never gonna be the same on set. You'll see the same, like in my, my job, uh, okay, I need this many gunshot wounds, entry wounds, exit wounds, this, that, blah, blah, blah. And yes, sometimes that gets just tedious and monotonous. Um, but it's, it's with different people, you know, there's different crews that I work with and that I keep working with and that networking aspect makes me happy. I think what keeps me motivated in this industry is that my sole occupation is not storyboarding. So when I get the opportunity to work on these projects individually, um, it allows me the room to breathe and really enjoy what I'm doing. Nothing ever worth it is easy. And when you love something, it's not, it's not hard to find motivation. When, you, when you're passionate and you, you're ready to jump out of bed at three o'clock in the morning, uh, just ready to go because it's just what you love to do, it's, it's hardly even, you can't even call it work, you can't call it hard. Uh, it actually makes it very easy. Um, you just gotta be able to take the jabs. Um, the constant rejection, uh, things like that. But when you love something so much, you just, it just comes with the territory. I don't find it difficult. So that's a hard question to answer. It's just tons of fun. It's like, uh, it, it, I guess it, it doesn't seem like work. Um, I mean, sure you have really long days in my limited experience with film. Um, there's long days. I mean, you're, you're you know, out maybe, in the sun for 12 or more hours and setting up stuff, but it's all just good fun. It's, it's, it's such an amazing thing to be a part of that I, there's nothing I dislike, at least not yet. In any in industry, you're gonna have challenges, but if you have a certain passion for something um, and a desire um, and you just know that you're in the right place and you're doing what you were meant to be doing, um, it makes going back and working hard and long hours um, and drinking lots of coffee and laughing and 
just, you know, pushing through it makes it all worth it. Um, I don't think anybody could ever do this if they didn't absolutely love the environment, love the um, creative atmosphere, the uniqueness. We're kind of like the Adam Sandler, um, Happy Madison production team where just no matter where we're at, no matter what we're working on, when it's time for the Garcia brothers to produce a project, we all come together and there's this camaraderie that is just different than any other set. And I think that kind of motivation to have a, a like-minded team who support each other and bring out the best in each other is incredibly important to have in an industry that is very difficult to work in. Being around a team of like-minded individuals who have the same or similar goals and ambitions of, as you in terms of the production itself is something that is very, very helpful. It makes you as a um, professional want to work harder and work your best because you see all of the individuals around you doing their best. So just being a part of a team um, who supports you, who believes in you is very, very, very helpful. The fact that film um, and just the arts in general can really change lives. Um, I think everybody has experienced either watching a film or listening to music or seeing a live theater piece and their life changing. Um, and I think that that's a huge gift that the arts give to people. Um, and some people may not really notice it, but at some point in their life, they will realize and they'll remember that film really changed my aspect on this person or the way that I work in my everyday life or whatever it is. Um, I do think that every single person will experience that one day in their life. I know I have, um, and I know a lot of other people who have, and I just think that that's the beauty of filmmaking. So uh, they, there's nothing like the film industry when it comes to uh, just the, the difficulty and the selectiveness of, of, uh, of greatness there. Um, you know, similar to professional sports, I mean, you really just have to be excellent uh, and extraordinary uh, to be able to, to survive in this industry and to, to excel in it. The fact that there have been so few Christian films that have been able to accomplish that um, and to be able to hold up, you know, that that level of quality, uh, to be able to compare against the great stories that, that come out of Hollywood, um, you know, every month is, is something that inspires me um, because I, I see just a, a hunger in, in the world to be able to, to be able to receive that message. Um, and then the medium of film um, is really just an untapped uh, market and, and and medium to be able to, to share that with uh, the rest of the world. Describe the dynamic of working on a Garcia Brothers set. So this is uh, it's probably the easiest question to answer, um, but also one of the most difficult to, to do it justice. They are very, uh, you know, they're obviously very professional um, with the work, um, but they, they're also very charismatic. Um, and it's funny because they have they have very, very different personalities, but very similar personalities at the same time. It's weird, um, where I, I feel like they, they, they trade brains uh, every now and then. Um, but I could be talking to, to, to one of them, and, uh, and it's a similar sense of humor as, as talking to, to the other. Um, but they obviously, they, they have different strengths. Um, you know, Xavier definitely being the, uh, the, the leader, and um, he's able to really just carry his vision, um, and he's very well-spoken. Um, and then Jonathan just it's just with the with his art design and visual background just you know he, he really is an outside the box thinker. Well the dynamic was very fun you could definitely tell that they're brothers just by the jokes the camaraderie that you see in the office but um you could also definitely tell that there was a lot of passion between the two of them to really make sure that the story was told and visualized exactly the way that they both had seen it. When I first met them um, I, I was so impressed at uh, their creativity, their passion, their attention to detail, and all of that is, is put together in this package that also includes a great compassion um, f 
for the people they work with and for the subject matter. Um, and they instantly have this ability to make you feel like you're part of a family. I have been personally blessed to have known the Garcia brothers for more than half my life now. And so genuinely, they are family to me. They're two of the most important people in my life. Um, and I mean, most people would say that working with family is tough, but not in this instance. Um, Xavier and Jonathan run an incredibly professional, but also fun set. And I feel like it's rare that you are able to kind of get those two things working simultaneously the way that they're able to produce it. I've known Jonathan and Xavier for maybe 12 years now, um, and I've worked on a lot of projects with them. Um, and every project, I am amazed at their ability to strive for excellence. They, you know, never require anything of any cast member, or production team member, um, that they don't ask of themselves. Um, they're dedicated and they're um, compassionate and they're caring about the people who are on set. Um, they're there for the ultimate purpose of glorifying God, and that's unmistakable. The Garcia brothers make sure that everybody is treated equally in terms of their actors. So they will work on one-on-one -on -one with each actor, depending on if they were, you know, one of the lead actors like Arissa or Tommy or one of the, you know, more background actors, you know, working with the children. They really made sure to coach everyone and to make everyone feel like they were such an important part of the project. This went for the crew as well. Um, it was just a great, great group of people to be a part of. Everybody felt like they were there for the right reasons and everybody wanted to put, you know, their, they're all into this incredible project and the Garcia brothers were so thankful for that and they really show their appreciation for everybody coming out and it was something that I will always remember and something that I'm very proud to be a part of. They are incredibly focused and incredibly knowledgeable about what they were trying to accomplish with their vision. They led the team well. You know, uh, Jonathan was super, super nice to me and giving me this opportunity to be on set. They really do make it something that is unforgettable and you want to continue to work on their sets, whether it's in the same role as you did on the previous one or something else. Um, I will forever want to work with the Garcia brothers. Um, I don't think I will ever be able to turn down an offer that they give me to work with them. Very straightforward. Like, it, you, we show up and we show up to work. Um, Everyone is approachable, though, you know, with questions, with, with concerns. Like, everyone is so approachable. We go there and we have a certain amount of time to get these shots off. Everyone understands that. Everyone puts in extra effort to make sure that happens. But it's seamless, you know? It's not like a job. It doesn't feel like a job. It's weird. You go, you go do your thing, and you do it in the right amount of time, and everybody's happy. You know what I mean? Like, I, I like that feeling, um, it's, I mean, you could call it strict, I, I, I call it organized, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, it was just a good experience, I would do it again and again. They are a hidden gem in Boston, and I realized it about two years ago on our first film set called A Blood Throne. When you're on their sets, they are so professional and efficient and they've covered all bases and they've done their research and they come with excellence and they do it at 150%. But the biggest takeaway that I had and experienced on our first film set was just the energy, the love. They have the biggest hearts that I have ever met. <laughs> it is infectious to everyone in the area, in the building. They care, genuinely care about each and every soul that is in that space, no matter what your position is. You know, if you need them, ask them a question, they, they're there. And if they don't have the answers, they're going to get the, answer, the answers. And it's just, I knew then that I wanted to work with them, you know, in the future. And well, here we are. What advice would you give to someone who wants to work in this field? Be humble. 
never think that you know more than anyone else on set or anyone else in the room because you never know who you're going to learn from. It could be from the least likely source that you expected to learn new information from. And that's really what the experience is. Take it all in, take advantage of the overall experience and just pull all of the information you can from all of the sources you can. I, I would say, you know, take, take every opportunity you can. Um, even if it's an unpaid opportunity, if it's an opportunity to just, you know, be a boom operator, uh, to help with the set design, um, to act as a background actor, um, get any and every opportunity because there, that's where you're going to make all of your connections and, and take every opportunity uh, serious as well. Um, you know, if you impress somebody as being, you know, the best, the best boom operator uh, out there. You know, you people will know that and they'll trust you and they'll, they'll give you other opportunities as well. It's like, like anything else. One, do your research. If you know what you want to do when you have a specific um, role that you want to do on a film set, whether that be acting, anybody behind the scenes and post, pre, whatever it is, do your research, know what you're getting yourself into. Um, but I think the main thing would be going on to set and really just absorbing everything that you are experiencing. Don't limit yourself. Learn as much as you can about every aspect of every production, every person that's involved in a, a production. What is their role? Um, have respect for the people that are serving you your food or cleaning up after you. Um, the challenges that the makeup artists might have, it, it goes beyond just yourself and what you're there for and the more that you understand the complexity of what goes into making a film and the actual number of hands that need to be involved, um, the better off you are. The best piece of advice that I could give someone entering the industry is the importance of connections and maintaining relationships with people um, who may not be super influential in the industry right now, but who may be able to connect you with somebody in the future. Um, I don't mean this in a fake or superficial way, but just kind of harvesting all of the relationships that you cr create um, during, you know, maybe when you're going to film festivals or when you're going to industry-wide events. Just kind of um, keep yourself open and keep an open mind when meeting people and uh, make sure to, you know, follow up with them and harvest those connections. Pretty simple, really. Don't be a jerk. You can be 95% talent and, and everything you touch just looks like bang, you know, perfect. And you're quick and everything and but you're kind of not the nicest person to be around, you know? You're kind of cocky, you know, head stuck up your butt a little bit, you know. Um, just not nice to be around, you know? Talk, talk crap about people and stuff, you know? Just, we, we've all seen the type. So they're a 95% talent. And then the director has a choice to hire them or a 60% talent who is helpful, who is fun, who it's just great to be around. They see someone struggling, they go and help them. You know, just a nice person. Every time that 60% talent is gonna get hired. If your heart's not in it, don't do it. If it's just a hobby, don't do it. Uh, there are other jobs out there that pay way more money for way less hours. This is uh, some, it's a field that you, you need to be passionate about and figure out what you're passionate about you know if you if you're not sure like be a pa and go on set and see if it's for you i would say that just push yourself and just keep creating keep creating keep creating because there is a point where you have to just do instead of keep learning learning is amazing and it's awesome and you should continue to do it and, and, you know, it's, it's kind of similar to my situation where I'm in school right now and I'm learning all the skills that I need to practice in communication and media, marketing and filmmaking. But at the same time, I just knew I needed to start. 
and so I, I started my own videography business and I don't know everything perfectly. I struggle sometimes with saying the right things to clients and producing things in the exact way that they want them to, but at the end of the day, I'm putting myself out there and learning every single time. Always keep an open mind and make sure that they maintain really good communication with the director and the producer because you need to understand that the screenplay, they, there was a vision for creating that screenplay and maintaining that good communication will help you as the artist create the best visual representation of their story that they want it to be told. You have to stay passionate. If this isn't a passion for you, you're in the wrong field. Um, this, this is a field that needs a lot of focus. Um, you know, in, in, in my case, um, finding the right items and stuff like that, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful treasure hunt, incredibly time consuming, and you have to have the passion and the focus to do that. You know, literally, you know, I spent, there were days I, I spent on uh, one of their previous productions, I'd spend 12 hours looking for just the right item, you know, because it's that important. You know, if I were to settle, it would show. And uh, to get it just right, you, you need that kind of perseverance. Wow, that was great. Wow. <laughs> that it's was very no it's, it's very it's very humbling it is yeah. I, I love it I love it I, I love to get kind of feedback on um, the experience the set the story um, the individuals that we get to work with hear a little bit about them um, we, we had such an amazing amazing crew mm -hmm. for underground I mean just professionals from all over but uh, they knew how to work hard play hard yeah yeah they're very special people um, it was really great to connect with old friends and meet new friends yeah. uh, and they're very talented uh, a lot of the people we worked with and I'm just so excited to continue working with them again yeah no it's it's exciting and you know as, as we've discussed many times in the past that we our sets um, a lot of what we do is we do love to be um, I mean, we for the most part, the 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 set for Underground was a, a crew of you know volunteers. We had to, we've discussed ad nauseum many times in past episodes regarding the fact that like this was a film that we knew we were going to get into with zero budget, yeah. and um, and a part of that was to kind of rally the troops, sell them on a great story, um, show them the goal, the vision, the future, which is something that we're currently working on a little pilot episode, uh, you know the the full length two-hour pilot um, talk to them about that get you know and get a team on board um, with with that as the as the ultimate goal mm -hmm. and we were to, able to gather an amazing crew of both professionals and people that are you know kind of first stepping into the world of cinema maybe some that are coming from you know union theater um, the, you know equity theater and are stepping over and are making the, the crossover into uh, into film and also individuals that have done film uh, commercial wise right are stepping into narrative film and it was great to have a set of such like unique minds but that were all like-minded in the sense that we all had the same goal the same desire and all you know had the same passion and love yeah it's it's so hard to create something have an idea and then give it to uh talented actors and crew and then to just be 100% on board and to hear them kind of say, you know, I, I just, I felt like this was my thing. You yeah. know, it wasn't just our thing. That's very special to us because when we present our work, we want everyone to feel like it's their baby. Yeah, yeah. And it was really great to hear that that's something that they felt and, and it was great. Yeah, yeah, you tend to work passionately for something that you have uh, ownership over, you know, that you mm -hmm. feel like you're actively involved in and it belongs to you. And and that's something you're absolutely right. I think that goes back to you know communication, mm -hmm. um, preparation. Right. You know everybody that's prepared on a set. Like if everybody's showing up knowing their job and willing and wanting to doing their job, it almost creates like a confidence for you, you know you and your position. It's like okay, I know everybody else is doing their job. It almost builds kind of a uh, like confidence. I guess is the best right. way to say yeah. it, right? Yeah. yeah, and I think also too. Um, one of the great things that um, we make sure, I know you and I make sure all the time that if someone is going to be burdened, if someone's going to take the slashes in their back, if someone's going to take the brunt of the pain, it's going to be us. 
Yeah, yeah. It's going to yeah, be yeah. us. And yeah. we're going to show everyone um, when we want something done, uh, they're going to see us feel the pain of yeah, the work. Like not asking anyone anything that you wouldn't want to do, right. like that you wouldn't do yourself for. Right. You know, yeah, hands down. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's servant leadership, you know, it's yeah. like, it's, you, you're serving them. You are finding ways to make their job easier by serving them in their positions mm-hmm. with their tasks, with their to do's. And if you yourself can't finding someone who can, you know, and, mm-hmm. uh, no, that's something that we do definitely take pride in that our sets are collaborative in that way, that mm-hmm. they are, um, you know, that they're inclusive in that way. Um, I'm excited for the next project. I'm excited yeah. to, to start moving forward. And it's coming quick. It is. It's coming fast. Things are materializing really quickly. We've got uh, some pretty epic things that I'm personally excited about that uh, we won't spoil, but maybe we'll talk in a future episode. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, guys, thank you so very much for joining us at The Harvest. Um, you know, we have our... Uh, our lines are open for any kind of questions because I know like a lot of these things that um, we decided to do this episode precisely because of questions regarding, you know, the crew and crew positions and things like that. And we thought, hey, why not create a special with a roundtable discussion? So if you have any other questions, you can if they're short, you can reach me personally directly at uh, on Twitter at X Garcia and at Jonathan Harvest. Or for longer questions, you can reach us at uh, info at mountharvest.com. Uh, special thanks to our show producer, Alana Despena. If you have any questions about anything that you saw, you know we're going to put a lot of the information down in the show notes. You can check that out. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for joining us. Yes, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks. Thank you. Join us at the patreon.com forward slash the harvest podcast for some BTS footage of our cinema production life.